Hello, I greet all of you from Accra, Ghana. I'm Dr. Thomas Boabin. I teach at the University of Ghana Business School. And uh, I've been offered this great opportunity to share with you uh, some ideas and some experiences when it comes to leadership and accountability on this noble yearly program. This is a very important topic and uh, in order to help us to adequately discuss it, it has been divided into three models. And this is the second of the three, which I have titled Leading Others. Leading Others. When you talk about leadership, it is about two things. Leading yourself and leading others. And so the entire program, we have the model one, that is leading yourself, leading myself. And then the second one is where we are going to focus on leading others and how culture affects uh, leadership will come after that. So when we talk about leading others, what are we trying to achieve? What are we looking for to say you leading others? We are just talking about positioning ourselves in such a way that we will be able to influence others to join us to achieve defined targets, goals, objectives, vision. And so this time, the focus and the attention is going to be on how to get them along, how to get others out. It doesn't matter where we are. It could be at any level. Human beings, by nature, we are unique. We have different preferences. We have our own priorities. So for you to come and tell me that, kindly leave your preferences and follow me because my preferences are superior and more important is a lot of work. And that is what we are talking about uh, today. And this must be done and must be done properly. Otherwise, you will get people with you, but they won't be with you. Physically, they are there, but emotionally, they are not with you. How do we ensure that we get people along, leading others? At the end of the day, we hope that we will all live here with certain specific results, positive. One, how do people get opportunity to influence others? And I call that sources of power. And then, what are the specific strategies, if you have the power that you can use to influence others? And how do you use this to achieve reforms, to introduce changes. It is not always the leaders who influence the subordinates. It is very common, and we are going to look at scenarios where subordinates also get opportunity to influence leaders. How can a subordinate do that? Because I'm sure all of you are not the topmost leader in the organization. We are all in the middle, there are others at the top. So as we try to influence those below us, we also need the tools to be able to influence those on top of us. And these are the things that hopefully, at the end of the day, we are all going to share and go home with the capacity to do. I want us to understand the concept of power. It is very important. When we talk about power, we are talking about the ability to make things happen. The ability to make people do things they will not do on their own. That is power. And we have two types of power, we can just talk about two types, which is not very important to us. One, I will call 
the illegal power. Illegal. So all of us here, if you are to be gathered in a room, a man can just force the door, enter, pull a gun or something and ask everyone, bring your computer. And I'm sure all of us will oblige. I will be the first because life is good to experience. And then this man will pick it and go away. The man has exercised power. He has been able to force us to do something that there was no way we were going to do it. And in the second scenario, we could have someone entering. We are there. And the person comes to explain things to us, appeal to us, tell us how some people urgently need computers, which is life and death. And all of us, as human beings, thinking that even if we leave it, for this man to go and solve those problems, we'll be able to replace them, agreeing and collecting our pieces and giving to this man to go away. In both cases, we will have lost our computers. But the first man, if we are to get the opportunity, I'm sure all of us will report for the security to arrest him. But the second one, we will not. Even if we meet him and we have some more computers, I'm sure we will add more. Both have exercised power, but one is legal and then the other is illegal. The legal one is what we describe as authority. And so authority is the legitimate use of power. And so what we are talking about here is that legitimate use of power, not the illegitimate one. And so we're talking about the ability to cause or prevent an action. You can stop it and you can make it happen. And you can't have power unless there are three critical things. And so, and these are the leader, the followers. If you are alone, what are you going to do? There cannot be power. So a situation must be there. There must be subordinates and the leader must be there. So we say that power is a function of these three because it is the relationship among these three. Power is used to influence subordinates, peers, superiors, clients, suppliers, and any stakeholder that has to do with what you are doing. Ability to control our environment is power. Capacity to influence outcome. So when we talk about power, more or less we are talking about influence because in fact, some argue that power is a function of influence. When we talk about influence, we are talking about ability to win people, to make people cooperate when they don't want to. And so you say that I influence you to do this. What it means is that if not because of the strategies I used, you were never going to do it. And when it is done without coercion, that is what we are talking about here. The authority to make people do what the leader wants is what we are talking about as influence. It affects how people feel and it affects how people think. And so, in your organizations, whatever you do is all about power and influence. A leader's job is to read these realities correctly and marshal sufficient power to influence the achievement of organizational objectives. Where you want to go. In fact, in most cases, you, the leader, alone understand and appreciate the organizational goal. Especially where you have graduates who have been just recruited or employees who have just joined the organization. When they come, the thing they are thinking of is their first income, changing their clothes, getting a car or something. It's not you and your organizational goal. And so when they work hard, in most cases, you realize that they are working so hard because they are on probation, not because they share in the values. 
it takes time. And that depends on your ability to inculcate that spirit. And so as you get them along and they get their salary and that with time, they will become socialized and they will buy into the organizational uh, goal. And so to influence, and it's very important for us to understand because there are so many ways by which we can influence people to do things. Some are not sustainable. And that is what will make the leader an effective leader. But some, you do it and the person unconsciously follows it without realizing that you are even introducing any influence. And sometimes they believe that they are doing it themselves, not you. But the reality is that you do it. So as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about power, we are talking about a means of influencing. It is one of the ways by which we can influence. Where do people get power? Where do people get power from? Where? We call them basis of power. There are so many ways. And each source provides a particular power. The man who entered the room and pulled the gun and we gave him our computers, what he used was based on fear. We feared for our lives. That's why we gave out the computers. And so we say that that source, the base of that power, is coercive, false. Legitimate power is I am demanding it because of where I am. So, for instance, if all of us from all these African countries should gather in a room and I'm facilitating and leading you, I'm sure you all agree with me if I mention your name and ask you to kindly stand up and make a contribution or ask a question. You do it, you oblige. Not because of coercion, because you see me as the facilitator who has been given the legal basis to issue out instruction. So legitimate power, the one that our presidents, our, our, our legislative members, our uh, organizational leaders exercise, they are legitimate. That is why otherwise my president was just an ordinary young man and had no business of asking me to do ABC. No. But today, even when he entered this room, I have to stand up. Stand ovation is because of legitimacy, because we all agree. Expert power, people will come and listen to you because you are the only one who has the skill to fix that machine. You are the only one who can work on that software. You are the only one who can install it on their, on their machine. And so you, whatever they say, you will do it. Whatever these people will tell you, you will follow. Why? Because they are in quotes, better than you are, so far as that skill, that activity is. And so that power is expert power. We need to understand this so that we know when to use what. There are situations you can use expert power. You don't need to worry yourself with coercion and threats. Reward power. Yes. Once you do this, whoever comes to the office every day for the year gets this package. You are compelling people to come to work every day. By what? Not because of your position, not because you're forcing them, but because of the reward that they hope to receive uh, someday. Personal traits, we call it referent power, is very close to charismatic power. And so you see that the person has certain things that are not so common. And people are willing to listen to them, people are willing to allow them to influence their lives. Access to information. People are so powerful, especially when it comes to networking in Africa. If you don't, they won't tell you. They will not give you the information and you chase them for it. Connection, I'm talking about networking. I don't know what you have in your countries, but in Ghana, it's very common that if I am looking for a passport, for instance, if I want the town and country planning people to approve my building plan for me, 
it has become so common that before I even go to the office, I will ask my colleagues, shall I have to go to some country planning? Do you know someone there? That is it. And so we try to use the connection. If I know that my colleague should know someone there, this my colleague will link me to that person and then I go there. And so that my colleague becomes so important. Sometimes you have to drive to their, their, their uh, residential areas to get the information so that when you go there, you don't uh, join the queue for that long. And the ability to alter the job specifications of your subordinates, we call it ecological uh, power. And so, and so it's very important for us to understand that the things that we do that make people accept us and be willing to follow the instructions have basis. If you lose the base, if you are an expert, that is why everyone is coming to you and they realize that now the expertise is no more and I can assure you the respect will go down and they won't come to you, they'll go to other places. That is why we all change our mechanics from time to time because the reason why we go there, we don't see them. It is important for us to understand that the basis of the power determines the basis of the influence. And so I have tried to put few ones here, not all of them. For instance, you have organizational power. You find them position, reward, information, and punitive power. Punitive power is the same as coercive power, the threat. And so, and then when it comes to the personal influence, you're talking about expert influence, referent influence, and peer influence. Peer influence is because you're colleagues. And then we have expert because you know more, and you have referent because it's, you are perceived as having something that the others uh, don't have. In organizations, the position you occupy, it doesn't matter your age, you have so much influence. The reward, your ability to give it to people. And so if I tell you in my personal example, it's very powerful, the reward uh, power. In my personal example, I work for my school as the examinations officer. And as an as examinations officer, I do so many things and I work with so many people and at the end of the day, I recommend how much they should be paid. And so you can just imagine that when, wherever I pass, people call me chief, boss, chief, boss. It doesn't mean I am, in fact, several of them are professors, they are senior lecturers, I'm only a lecturer. But they will just, you know, because of the reward, the, 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 the expectation that, you know, something will come. It's very important. Information is there and punitive. And so if I should ask you, which ones, coming to the organizational level, which one do you think is more effective? I want you to think about it. Don't rush in concluding that the reward is more, no. Which one? And I know you will get the answer right. There is none. None is more superior. It is the situation that determines. If in all situations, you want to use the others and because punitive sounds kind of barbaric, it, it sounds kind of uh, backward, so you won't use it. You make a mistake. There are situations that you have to go uh, punitive. And that is the question I asked you. So you should be able to use a combination, combination of all these factors, looking at the context and the situation. It's very important. What are you trying to achieve? Do you hope to continue relating? Or you want to terminate the relationship? That should also help you. And who are the people you are dealing with? I always say that whenever subordinates are engaged in activities that require brown, that is physical, exertion of physical energy, no matter what, people, most people will try to avoid the work. When naturally an activity imposes pain, it generates pain on this natural body, people will do everything to minimize the period that they spend on those activities. And so therefore, in such a situation, how are you going to regulate behavior?
It's very important for us to understand. But as I said, of all these sources and all these power bases, we need to. Some people may possess several of them. Several. You are expert. You are the topmost uh, 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 leader in the organization. And then you can also use the coercive one. And you have a lot of information that the people will need. And then the networking, they can use you to network. You have all this. So which one to use at a time is very critical. And as I mentioned, there are so many considerations that we need to uh, look at. Because if you don't use the right combination, you get it wrong. And the followers may revolt. Or, and that may hurt productivity. And so it is very important for us to understand that leaders need to be very careful we need to be very knowledgeable. We need to, that is why I said earlier on that we need to monitor, you need to scan, use your SWOT. Otherwise, you do the wrong thing. Sometimes you do the right thing at the wrong time. Sometimes the right thing, but you're doing the wrong thing. Sometimes you are doing the right thing at the right time, but you're doing it the wrong way. And you need to combine all this because we are interested in influencing behavior.